The Glass House is rated M for a mature audience. It contains sexual references, adult themes and material that may offend some viewers. Ahead in the Glass House, we're looking for a few adequate men. Or you, always wanted to get shot at but never had the confidence? Pretty much unemployable? Easily excited by pictures like these? Well, there's a place for you in the new We'll Take Anybody Australian Army. <laughs> Overweight? Nothing hides your unsightly bulges like camouflage. Let's face it, if we can hide a tank, we can hide you. Just write cannon fodder on the back of an envelope or get a clever friend to do it for you and you can be part of the expanded, expendable Australian Army. Be all you can be, even if it isn't very much. Welcome to The Glass House, the program that asks the question, if Australian TV is about to turn 50, does that mean it's going to buy a Ferrari and run off with a young, big boob set-top box? <laughs> More news than politicians coming home to fireworks and porn this week. A survey done in Melbourne has found an 1,100-page recipe book as heavy as a house brick is the most popular volume with shoplifters. Stealing the Cook's Companion by Stephanie Alexander is the do-it-yourself version of doing a runner from a restaurant, except you have to run home with the book and cook the free meal yourself. <laughs> Chopper Reed's books are also nicked regularly, which isn't surprising. They're a good read, as opposed to the author, who's a very naughty read. <laughs> it's known as a five-finger discount. Until Chopper gets hold of you, then it's a three-and-a-half-finger discount. <laughs> In South Africa, the police don't have enough cars, so the security minister has told them to ride to crime scenes on bicycles or donkeys. <laughs> you might think it's bad in a divvy van, but it's way better than being shoved in the back of a donkey. <laughs> but police donkeys are useful, and if you want to put on the siren, just yank its ears. <laughs> eeyore, eeyore, eeyore. In Romania, the taxation department is trying to get the country's 4,000 witches to start paying income tax. At the moment, only one witch pays tax, and that's on top of a massive hex debt. <laughs> you should see witches at tax time. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Deductions make and rebates double. <laughs> Gold be spun from lead and metal, declare dependence Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> Cauldron simmer, fires mellow, now make a frog of Pete Costello. <laughs> Congrats! <laughs> Crazy mixed up news, serial Willa. Hmm? The Victorian police is a bit embarrassed after a newspaper published sections of a secret psychological test used to stop psychopaths joining the force. It also doubles as a police dating service. <laughs> <laughs> the test uses a series of questions to screen out psychopaths based on the flawless reasoning that psychopaths always tell the truth. <laughs> you have to answer true or not true to statements like Someone has control of my mind. <laughs> Dirt frightens and disgusts me. <laughs> and my personal favourite, I like repairing door latches. <laughs> and if you answered that last one, not true, but the germs make me do it, you might just be a psychopath. <laughs> if you're interested in joining the Victorian Police, the test and how it's analysed are available online. Mind you, it's pretty easy to work out. Answer true to I believe in the right of law and you're in. Answer true to my demon makes me bleed people. <laughs> you're probably not in. <laughs> Thank you! How are you, Hansi? I'm very disappointed this oh, week. No, yeah. Why? Well, with state elections coming up, apparently the Green Party have told their candidates to sharpen up their image so they're going to be more likely to be voted in. 
That is ridiculous. Do you know we've got a drought in this country? If those people start having showers now, we're all going to die of thirst. <laughs> Seriously, if they cut their hair, do you know how many species are going to die because they'll have nowhere to hide? <laughs> I love the greens as they are. Keep it up, people. Don't have showers. Enjoy your lives. Smoke what your bloody party says. <laughs> is their name? Green stuff. <laughs> Seriously, though, I remember when Peter Garrett was a green. Remember when he was a green? He was with the Labor Party. I'd rather him when he was a green. You know, they wouldn't tell, they wouldn't, the Labor Party wouldn't want Peter Garrett to dance. I remember when he used to dance. He used to dance like a man who was being electrocuted. <laughs> That's how I want my greens. Get out of there, go off, go nuts and bloody good on you, Lord. Yeah! <laughs> Joining me, Corinne and Dave, to throw some stones in the glass house tonight, fresh from the Countdown Spectacular, currently touring the country. Well, as fresh as he gets. Molly Meldrum! <laughs> and the elegant lady of Australian stand-up, Fiona O'Loughlin! Movers and shakers. First up, FHM Magazine, which has voted Amanda Vanstone number 12 in their list of Australia's 20 scariest women. <laughs> Alexander Downer is number 11. <laughs> Naomi Robson is only Australia's third scariest woman, but she is Australia's fifth sexiest horse. <laughs> Jermaine Greer is number two, and number one on the FHM list is Melbourne gangland matriarch Judith Moran, who has a list of her own and has just put the FHM editors at the top. <laughs> Good luck, guys. <laughs> Corinne, you're a scary woman. Who scares you? Amanda Vance, and I can understand why she's on that list, because she wields a lot of power yep. and she wields it in evil, evil ways. Mm. And, you know, Judith Moran I can understand too, because she's very frightening. And hi, if you're watching, Judith, hi. <laughs> but there's some people on that list... She's actually like... a very nice lady. Judith Moran. How do you know Judith no, Moran? I can't believe it. Like, the, Molly knows someone in the news? <laughs> I was at this party at Madonna's place in the spa and there was Judith. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> I'm assuming it was Judith who came up to Molly and said, love your work, not Molly going up to <laughs> Judith and saying, love your work. No, she was just very, very nice, you know, and, and I didn't realise for a moment who she was and then... And she said, it said, you know some of my family and I then realised who she was. Yep. And, and she seemed very, very nice, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and... But oh, I really don't want to pursue this conversation. No. <laughs> Every time you said on TV that something should be number one with a bullet, she went, I could make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, could, we shouldn't joke about those guys, because no. they are... Uh... Yeah. This list is wrong, though, because yeah. my mum's not on it. Yeah. <laughs> Your mum's a scary woman? Well, yeah, either get a scary mum or a scary dad, don't you? Like, there's the boss or the... the... My mum's the boss, you know? And yeah. she makes all the arrangements, and sure. dad just turns up and parts the car. And <laughs> <laughs> my dad's, like, the background dad. And he rang me once, because he because mum's the boss and she's in charge. And what my does your mother do, comes out the back. She's just a housewife. But mum... Dad, uh, my husband comes out the back and goes, Fiona, you, your dad's on the phone. I'm like, oh, mum's dead. You know that? He's just back <laughs> Women have to be scary. It's yeah, part of the job. Yeah, I think this is a list. It, it's a veiled attempt at a list of chicks we wouldn't root. Whereas, no. I, mean, oh, oh, I would root Naomi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They would definitely root Naomi Robson, oh, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, most people. Would. You know who I reckon this is. No, a... no, I wouldn't. That's a good point. That's a good point. You know who I reckon would be a scary Australian woman is Nicole Kidman's mum? Yeah, right. No, yeah. she's lovely too. Oh, God, you've met everybody. Yeah. Well, Molly has actually officially met everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I had this dream that I got... This is how tragic my life is. I had a dream that I gay crashed the Nicole... Nic the Kidman's family reunion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had this dream. In your dream, you could have been invited in the dream. But... <laughs> so even in your dream, you didn't think you were worthy of an invite? <laughs> Did I tell you about the dream where I was molested by Will Ferrell? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is this a no, I was he wearing that suit from Elf? 
Oh. He was at my place. He was in front of my mum, too, you know. <laughs> I was asleep, and then he was feeling sleepy, and she said, well, there's not really... And he came over and slept beside me, <laughs> and he touched me. <laughs> Actually, I, I find the, the, the Queen very scary. Mm. Yes. Really? Because she's uh, cr having a crack at your title. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be a real ball buster. Yeah. I reckon she keeps... Well, the, the family is pretty nuts, but she manages to keep them on a fairly tight leash yeah. anyway, doesn't she? Mm. Don't I don't think she's very scary. We don't have to take much. She's the queen. She shouldn't have to take any shit, really, should she? It's like she's, like, own stuff. <laughs> have you ever met her, Molly? Yeah, I have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Our next mover and shaker is Australian biologist Philip Rhodes, who's going to build a cryogenic storage facility so he can deep freeze his parents and himself when they die. If his mum's anything like my mum, she's going to ruin the whole process by fiddling with the thermostat. <laughs> I'm freezing. Isn't anyone else freezing? <laughs> and even if you could come back in the future, why would you freeze your parents? They'll be tapping on the window of your cryogenic capsule. Wake up, Will! You're missing the best part of the century! <laughs> oh, Mum, just give me another 30 years. <laughs> Fiona, you love your family to death. Would you freeze them? Not all of them. Um... <laughs> <laughs> freeze all the assholes and give myself a bit of peace <laughs> in the afterlife. I wouldn't freeze myself. No. No. Well, you I, wouldn't want to... You don't want to come back. No, you don't want to live no, forever. I think I'm a bit old to come back. If I was, you know, in my 30s, at my peak, I might oh. freeze myself. <laughs> I'd have to kill myself, then uh, You're still myself. a very attractive woman. Don't like, like, talk yourself down. Oh, well, thank you, <laughs> thank you Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a joke, you know? <laughs> I thought, I, you know, when you remind yourself of someone, well, I think you look a bit like Sylvester Stallone's mother. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did it. What about you, Mo? How do you, how do, like, what, what happens when uh, Molly Meldrum finally uh, drops off this morning? Oh no, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, no, I mean, if I'm going to go, I'd like to be mummified, you know. Oh really? Well, in Egypt, and then thrown into the, in, in, into the, into oh. the Nile, and away we go. Would you be mummified with your hat on? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to think about that. <laughs> Before the 50 years of Australian television, big celebrations this week. You've been on TV what for 40 years? Started on commercial 1966. It's amazing. You've been on TV before decimal currency came in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is how Dave likes to measure all time. <laughs> People think that AD means, you know, <laughs> Dave, it's for after decimal. <laughs> I was on television before you were born. I know, oh, that is amazing. In Warnable, you know? And, and, and <laughs> I was in Warnable before you were born, when I think it. Really? Imagine what you were doing in Warnable before I was born. Are you my father? <laughs> Oh, move on, move on, please. <laughs> Our favourite mover and shaker is a DJ by the name of Sean Rowley, who runs London's hottest club night. It's called Guilty Pleasures and features the daggiest songs from the last 30 years. The definition of a guilty pleasure is a song you claim to hate but still belt out when you're drunk enough. They already have a name for that. <laughs> Karaoke. <laughs> A lot of the club's most popular songs are hits from the 70s and early 80s. People like to remind themselves of the days of big hair and shoulder pads. Now they've entered the days of no hair and incontinence pads. <laughs> Harder to explain are novelty songs, which supposedly everybody hates, yet they do incredibly well. Which I guess makes John Howard a novelty prime minister. <laughs> Molly, you hang out with Sherbet. What's your guilty pleasure? <laughs> Some people in the audience writing their own jokes, Mol. Absolutely. <laughs> um, my secret pleasure, actually, is, is, is coming up again soon. And it's on grand final day. And, uh, and I, it's, as soon as it it's, turns midnight and becomes grand final day, I put on the 1966 grand final 
and pretend it's 2000, well, in this case, 2006, and I go through all the rigors and I have the, the, the you know, and get the drink out and go, yeah, we won the grand final. Like St that, you know? Kilda won the AFL grand final. The only one you've ever won, 966. That's right. Well, yeah. I never saw it, actually. Well, Before I was... decimal currency. <laughs> <laughs> the year I started in television. Uh, guilty pleasures. What do you reckon, Fiona? Well, I would love to go to that club. Because air supply, I'm, um, you know... What club? I, I, the, <laughs> the music the, club. Oh, the, the club <laughs> we're talking about in oh, the right. story, Molly. Sorry. <laughs> uh, that takes me back to... Because that was when I was in my prime, where I should have been cryogenically frozen, right? But... With air supply? Yeah! <laughs> I was, I don't know, 22, I was a child bride. I can't get out the wedding photos, though, because they're too embarrassing. Oh, yeah. I was a cross between one of those bad toilet roll covers that your nana's and John <laughs> Benet Ramsey. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Do you know that, that back then I when you were talking two years about older than it. Air Supply was the their songs were the most played songs at weddings, engagements. Yeah, they, they were and it's not only here in America, huge. So you'd you know? still yeah, stand by them as a as a vocally fantastic. Really? What about making great. love out of nothing at all? <coughs> making love out of nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> I did that many times. <laughs> Do you know it's happened to me twice mm. that I've gone to the wrong wedding <laughs> and I've actually sat in the church <laughs> and I think, I don't know all these people, this is really weird, you know? That's not Madonna and Sean Penn. And, <laughs> no, and both times I had to go back to, I, I had to go back to the reception because they were pleased to see me there, you know? <laughs> uh, <that's>, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm serious. Did they think it was like some new reality TV got, show? Surprise, no, no. Molly. <laughs> no, no, and I got so pissed I made a speech at both of us. <laughs> I did. One only happened just before Christmas, uh, up in Hayman Island. You went you... to Hayman Island and you went to the wrong wedding. <laughs> How many were on Hayman? It's not that big. No, no. <laughs> the one in the wedding in Hayman Island. You go to the wrong island. Oh, <laughs> Molly, we are intrigued oh, by this one. That is so sweet, though. Normally, I'm always running late for things. Well, they say I do, you know? Mm. The first one was a disaster because I was running early and I was so proud of myself. I'm on time in the bloody church. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking for my, my partner. I'm thinking, where in the hell are they? And I just sat mm. down and this was really embarrassing. And again, they invited me back, the whole thing. It turned out I was... <laughs> it was the right church, yeah. the right time, but... But that, the wedding was a week later. Oh. <laughs> well, that's all right, Lizzie. Yeah. And how did you go to the wrong one on Hayman Island? <laughs> well, no, I was at the 50th birthday on that one, and I walked around the wrong oh, corridor, right. and they went, oh, Molly, like this, and I went, and there was a wedding. So, <laughs> so then they hauled me in. <laughs> I actually went to a gay wedding just recently. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, it, it... <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit Rain Man in Australia. That was the right wedding I went to, I can tell you right now. Yeah, in, in, Australia, in Australia, it was very nice. So that, that, but that, that's not, it's not legally recognised here, is it? So no, 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 no. Actually, this was because, you know the Peel in, in Melbourne? The Peel, yeah. Peel yes, Hotel, I right? do, yes. Tom owns the Peel. He's Scottish. Hi, hi Tom. Uh, yeah, and, no, he's Scottish <laughs> and he and, his, and, and Darren uh, are both English, mm. right? And they did it at the British consulate. Oh, so they were just... And then had a yeah, wedding sure. reception afterwards. It was oh, very nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, absolutely. They were in their kilts. It was very lovely. Yeah. They're good on them, isn't they? <laughs> Why not? Why wouldn't you be in your kilts? When so, they're Scottish. They're Scottish and they're... Well, can, can and they and, like and, and, and funny... Well, we've just come back from Scotland. <laughs> the great a lot of gay weddings <laughs> happening up in Scotland, I believe. Will was there. Did you marry anyone in Scotland? <laughs> 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 Everyone else was doing it. <laughs> actually, actually, Will wouldn't know what he did in Scotland, quite frankly, would you? Oh, I love that you're lecturing on me on having a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I'm not at the right wedding. <laughs> Later in the glass house, George W. Bush makes it through another day without catching fire or electrocuting himself. Amazing, isn't it? Increasing evidence of rampant drug use at the Dolmio factory.
And John Howard explains the background to all his government's major policy decisions. We don't have any understanding about the future. <laughs> Tonight's question on the glass house is how would you make Australian TV better? All right, let's find some answers. Or how would you like to improve Australian television? I'd like to put all the pollies on Big Brother. Would you like to see the, the pollies turkey slapped? Good on you. How would you make Australian TV better? More, more Australia, more European, if you want to say, yes. I like it. More nudity, yeah? I didn't say nudity, I said European. <laughs> How would you improve Australian television? Oh, mate, I'd get rid of Big Brother. Can't ever... A lot of people have made some great careers. What about Hot Dogs? He's doing really well. That was my other one. I was going to say I'd ban that show oh, as well, Get rid mate, of the you know? late night quiz yeah, as well yeah, as Big Brother. Can't handle it. How would you improve Australian television? Oh, I would just more nudity. Big boobs and stuff on television. Big boobs, yeah. Big boobs. All right. Um, <laughs> so you're a real deep thinker, yeah? Yeah, you can say that. Just boobs. If you see boobs, that's all you want to see. Put you on home and away. And what role would I play? Um, you could be the pregnant teenager. <laughs> what are you saying about me and my baby? <laughs> How would you improve Australian television? Well, I think I'd get to the announcers to sing the news. Oh, yeah, so even if it was a bad thing happened, it would be fun if it was in a song. Yeah, it'd be great if it was a choir, actually. Yeah, so yeah. another new sing for us. I can. All right, sing about the drought. We've got a drought in Australia. It's the longest drought in all, of all time. We have the longest drought in Australia. <laughs> I like it. I'm not thirsty at all. <laughs> Yucky news for Yana. In three days' time, Australian television will celebrate its 50th birthday. It's a momentous event. 50 years of TV. Or 35 years and 15 years of ads. <laughs> <laughs> to commemorate the event, 7 and 9 are both airing bigger primetime specials. The ABC celebration will be more low-key. It'll just be Kerry O'Brien drinking goon in a park. <laughs> And as well as celebrating long-running shows like Hey Hey and Neighbours, we'll also remember the shortest-running shows like Let Loose Live, Yasmin's Getting Married and Ray Martin Fights a Pig. <laughs> Dave, I'd like your help. Sure. I want you to be Australian TV. All right, great. And we're going to interview you. <laughs> Are you jealous of his hat? <laughs> First question, broadcast Hughes. How does it feel to be 50? Ah, uh, it feels... Look, I feel... I feel old, but still relevant. <laughs> You're like Molly Meldrum. <laughs> How do you feel? Because you're, you're quite a traditional... That television. How do you feel about these new upstart plasma screens coming oh, through? They're anorexic, aren't they? <laughs> you need a bit of thickness, a bit of width, a bit of... You know, I mean, you need to know... People need to know you're there. I don't want to be hanging on the wall like a bloody dickhead. <laughs> Molly, do you have a question for the telly? Absolutely. I mean, like, going from um, black and white to colour. I've known you for a long time, Molly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, is, what is it like to have Molly inside you for 40 years? <laughs> Molly's like an old pair of slippers, you know. <laughs> He's worn out, but you wouldn't throw him away, would you? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, dear. Can Who wouldn't you work with again? Oh, I wouldn't work with, um... <laughs> Who wouldn't I work with? I wouldn't work with bloody Humphrey B. Bear. Really? Why is that? Uh, no conversation. <laughs> What, what was it like, um... <laughs> actually sort of broadcasting two Olympic Games, you know? One in 56, when television first started. Mm, that was before decimal currency. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you could buy me for 42 pounds. <laughs> what, do you have a favourite channel? Yeah, I like, um, the ABC. Yeah. 
Love whatever they have on. <laughs> Love all their shows. <laughs> but I've, seen you, I've seen you on Channel 10 as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm a TV, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm all over the place. I forgot, I forgot. I forgot. God, I'm not a bloody monopoly. <laughs> well, we can see into you. Can you see out? Yes, I can. So you can see into people's lounge rooms? Yes, I can. What's that like? Uh, yeah, oh, it's you're interesting the... when they've got SBS on. I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Maggie Tabber in you a few times. I have, yeah. What goes on at the back of her head? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's all very tight, yeah. isn't it? Is it a part or is it? Um, she's got a. Is the television crying? <laughs> <laughs> Television's had a coughing fit. <laughs> Television's you need got... to turn it up a bit. <laughs> Thanks for adjusting me, Fiona. <laughs> you can adjust me any time you like. I saw, down, I saw down your dress then. <laughs> Maggie Tabber is a good woman, and I don't will ever talk anything bad about her. She loves. She looks great, especially in widescreen. <laughs> do, 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 do you like this whole new thing with with um, that's on Foxtel with the digital thing, where you can actually press the red button and interact? I. No, I don't like Foxtel at all. I don't want people to have to pay for me. I'm you not know, some whore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way it is for Wednesday, September the 13th. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Molly. Pleasure. And let's take a look at tomorrow's headlines according to the Fin Review. Aussie dollar softer. Hey, these are chocolate, says Costello. <laughs> In the New York Post, Bush lays 9-11 wreath. Clinton lays 9-11 widow. <laughs> the Illawarra Mercury has major event to celebrate TV's 50th birthday. Viewers downloaded off the net. <laughs> and the Sydney Morning Herald says, Aussie icon dies doing what he loved. Warnie smothered in freak shagging accident. <laughs> Join us on Saturday night as Triple J's Mick Warhurst hosts the New York-based art punk trio The Yeah Yeah Yeahs in a special live concert recorded for JTV Live. 11.05 Saturday night on ABC. The Venice Film Festival was fabulous this year and we'll be bringing you the highlights in just a few moments.